Hi, it's Dwyer, October 28th, 2020. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's dive into this week's NFL games and make some picks. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. I have three plays, short slate this week. I like the Pittsburgh Steelers on the road, getting three and a half points over their divisional rivals, the Baltimore Ravens. First, it's a divisional game. Understand, these teams know each other. Also, the game's going to be played at almost a playoff pitch. Right? I think that both teams are going to be motivated. This is not a sit-down game. This is one that the teams circle on their calendars. I also believe the Steelers are motivated. Understand, they're 6-0 and right now. Baltimore is 5-1. and so the Steelers here can firmly establish a lead of two games in the division. Right? It's a contentious division. These teams knew the other team was going to be their big rival in the division this year. Let's remember, Baltimore last year was the one seed in the AFC going into the playoffs. I think the Steelers don't want to let this opportunity pass them by. I think they want to get to 7-0 and and to beat Baltimore in the head-to-head, -to, -head, to have that tiebreaker, and to open up a two-game lead in the division. Finally, league MVP, Lamar Jackson. In my opinion, the league is catching up with him. They realize that he can't hit wide receivers that often. He's living off of tight ends. Right? They've studied the film. Baltimore, of course, was on everyone's short list of teams to be a serious threat to win the AFC. So they're a team that everyone else has studied. Lamar Jackson is not that new a commodity in the league anymore. I think the teams have figured out how to defense him a bit. If you look at the numbers, you'll see that Baltimore, at least according to some sites, Football Outsiders, is in the bottom half of the league in terms of offense. Right? I don't believe that this Baltimore offense is the same offense that dazzled the league last year. So the first play here are the Steelers right now. On the 28th, you're getting the Steelers at greater than a field goal. You're getting three and a half points. I like the hook. I like the Steelers getting three and a half points over Baltimore. The second bet, same game. Same game. I like the under 46 and a half points. Right? According to Football Outsiders, great site. The Steelers have the second rated defense in the entire league. Baltimore has the third rated defense in the entire league. Right? Let me also say, too, that both of their de uh, both of their offenses have slipped a little bit. Ben looks a little bit rusty after having had most of last year off. I think the 46 and a half is a little bit high for this divisional matchup where Baltimore wants both teams to be 6 and 1 after the game. The Steelers want the two game lead. I like the under 46 and a half points in this game. Finally, I like the Rams on the road laying four points over the Miami Dolphins. Folks, this game for me comes down to Aaron Donald, one of the league's most dominant defensive players, coming right up the middle of the line against a rookie quarterback who, depending on what you believe, is either 5'9 or 5'10, right to a in his first start in the National Football League. You've got to be kidding me. Right? I think this is a very tough game for Tua. Extremely tough. I don't think he's ready for it. The Rams are playing good football. Folks, they're 5-2. The defense 
is in the top half of the league. Right? Let's go further, too. You know, Miami, in a very weak division, right? The AFC East is weak. Miami was 3-3, three and three, folks. Now, if you're a Dolphin, right, you came into this year, you might not have been thinking that this was a year where the team could finish 500. And yet, here you are six weeks in. And with Ryan Fitzpatrick, Fitzmagic as they call him, you were 500. You were beating some good teams. You were exceeding expectations. And keep in mind, this is in a year where the New England Patriots are not meeting expectations. In other words, the Dolphins thought, you know what, the Jets are finished. We're competing with New England. Tom Brady's no longer there. Right? And let's face it, Buffalo, as good as they've looked, there are always going to be questions. I don't care what the numbers say about Josh Allen's accuracy. Certainly this year. Right? So Miami had to be thinking, you know what? If Lady Luck just comes our way a few times the second half of the year, who knows? Maybe we can compete for the division. Maybe we can get in the playoffs. Well, the team just waved the white flag. You're really going to start a rookie quarterback in his first start against the Rams? If you're in that Miami locker room right now, aren't you demoralized? Aren't you thinking to yourself, where well, there goes this year. This guy's going to have growing pains. Right? You know, we're the Dolphins. We're not the Alabama Crimson Tide. There isn't talent all over the place on this roster. Let me just say, too, that there's an open question on Tua. I hope the young man makes it. But Alabama had so much talent that you might remember guys like Jerry Judy going relatively early in last year's draft. Right? Alabama was loaded at wide receiver. In fact, let's be real here. Nick Saban's one of the best recruiters in college football. Alabama's loaded everywhere. So when Tua was on the field, didn't he have a talent advantage over most teams outside of LSU? So, many rookies don't make it. Many rookies at the quarterback position. Take time to figure it out. Look at Troy Aikman's stats when he first started playing. He's a Hall of Famer. Look at Peyton Manning's interceptions when he first started playing. So this has a rough combination here. I have to deal with one of the NFL's best pass rushers, disruptive force coming right over the middle of the line. Right? I have to deal with one of the league's better coaches, Sean McVay. Right? An offensive guru who's going to know how to create optical illusions for quarterbacks. And I have to deal with a locker room. That's three and three. Come on, Dolphin fans. Were you expecting to be three and three at this point of the season? They're three and three, and then they're hearing that, oh, we're changing quarterback. And, of course... Ryan Fitzpatrick himself was stunned. This has disaster written all over it. I like the Rams laying four points over the Dolphins. Let me also point out, too, that that Ram offense has been clicking, hasn't it? Right? Just on the merits, without the drama, Miami's defense is going to face a big challenge trying to stop this Ram offense. I like the Rams on the uh, road laying four points over the Miami Dolphins. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. If there's an edge you feel our community here online can get on the casino, if you have a different take on any of the games I've mentioned or on games I haven't mentioned, then I hope you leave that information in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.